Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 36 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, I'm going to be looking at some tweaks I've made to the moving bed and give an overview of my filtration now that the bed is up and running. After that, there'll be this month's underwater watch, which shows how the fish are waking up and getting their appetite back. Thanks again to all my new and old subscribers and all the likes and comments. It really is motivating and helps me keep working and making videos. If you're not already subscribed and are new to the channel, I release videos weekly and have more projects planned for this year in addition to the two I've already shown, so there's lots to look forward to. Remember also that when you click on the subscribe button, all of your fish will double in size this year. Probably. Right, let's get started. The first tweak I've made is really for the whole system, not just the moving bed, but it's very much due to the work I completed as part of installing it. To complete this, I use my painted it underwater splitter tap tool that allows me to adjust the flow through the splitter. The reason I have this splitter is to limit the flow into the multi-bay to prevent overflowing. However, since increasing the outlet pipe diameter, the system can take a greater flow rate. So the tweak here is to totally close off one tap and send all the water from the pump into the filter. The second of my high-tech gadgets is some tape I've used to mark the level in the vortex, or just below it because I'm a little inaccurate, so I can see if there's any increase in the multi-bay, which would be the first sign of it potentially overflowing. Anyway, a day later and there's no real sign of an increase, so I'm reasonably confident. I'll give it a week or so and then I can remove the splitter, meaning one less piece of plastic in the pond, which can only be a good thing. The next tweak was to make some changes to the aeration in the moving bed. The two aims here were to add a splitter between the static and moving beds, to make swapping between them simpler, and the second was to add some additional air stones into the moving bed to hopefully improve movement. I'm going to speed through a lot of this as once again the camera position is awful and you can't see most of it. In my defence it's tricky filming in the tiny shed but I really should do better. So, all done, and let's have a look. Firstly, I've put a splitter to add aeration. On one pipe, I've narrowed it down to some smaller tubing and added a four-way splitter to then add some air stones. I've only got two at the moment, so I've used some one-way valves to close off the unused ones. From the splitter with taps, the pipes go to each bed. Most of the time, this will be giving air to the moving bed but when cleaning, I can switch this and use the air to help clean the K1 in the static bed. It's still messy, so I need to do some tidying. And I also need to see how the moving bed functions when I add two more st air stones and the media's matured more. It may be that the air pump's not quite up to keeping it moving, but we'll wait and see. This is the last of the main updates on the moving bed. I'm calling it done for now. I'll obviously update when I complete smaller tweaks and when water testing. A couple of people have asked for an overview of my filtration, so here goes. The first stage is obviously the pump. It's a 13,000 litre an hour pump, 
but for many reasons that I'll mention later, I don't get nearly that flow rate through the system. Attached to it next is a splitter that I mentioned earlier, which hopefully will be removed over the next week or so. From there, the pipework curves around the base of the pond and then straight up some rigid pipe through the walled planted area and into the shed. One thing I'll point out here is the head height the pump contends with and why this obviously slows the flow rate down. The UV, which you'll see in a minute, is the highest point in the system and is about here in the shed. And the pump is at the deepest part of the pond, which is about four foot deep. This means the pump has to get the water up about eight foot before entering the filter. So the pipework enters the shed and then goes up to the UV. If you're new to pond keeping, UVs are designed to reduce green water by eliminating single celled green algae. Technically, a 55 watt UV is slightly over the top for my pond, as it's rated for ponds up to 55,000 litres, and mine's just below 11,000. But, and as much as I like Evolution Aqua as a brand, I take ratings somewhat with a pinch of salt. Additionally, I get a lot of sunlight on the pond, and well, finally it was on sale and I thought, why not? From the UV, it goes into the first bay of the multi-bay, the vortex. The waste comes in at an angle, causing a circular flow. The larger, or more accurately heavier items, will sink to the bottom and therefore be separated from the rest of the filtration. The second bay has brushes, which catch the larger items and work especially well collecting dead blanket weed after treatments. They work really well in my opinion and are easy to clean. The next bay used to be my moving media, however it's changed to a static bed now I've installed my separate moving one. It's filled with about 20 litres of K1 Micro and helps catch finer items of waste as they move through the filtration. It's easy enough to clean using aeration, as I mentioned earlier, and has a biological function as bacteria also colonise the media. The fourth and last bay has some very old and sad looking Japanese matting and some escaping K1 micro. The matting also does a somewhat dual role of mechanical and biological filtration. It's seen better days though, and I'm considering what to replace it with. The likely option is to use the remains of my K plus media as another static bed, but we'll see. On to the moving bed, which is purely for biological filtration. It's obviously new and I need to improve the movement as it matures and I increase the aeration. There is just under 40 litres of K plus media in it, but there are dead spots I need to address. It will be interesting to see what my water test results are like over the coming spring and summer, as I've improved both mechanical and biological filtration, but I will be increasing the amount of food going into the pond, so again, we'll see. Next to the skimmer, which as you can see is a favourite of frogs. I'll just remove these and come back. Right, as you can now see, the skimmer collects both large and finer waste from the surface of the pond. It collects a lot of plant matter, uneaten food, and since I added the filter floss, a lot of finer items, which at the moment is predominantly made up of dying blanket weed. This is three days since I last cleaned it, by the way. The skimmer feeds back underground and then returns the water here. I had planned to maybe install a backy shower from the skimmer, but a lack of room in the shed, where I'd prefer to keep it, and more importantly a lack of flow from the skimmer pump, meant it wasn't really viable. If you've any questions, suggestions or comments you'd like to make about my filtration, please do so in the comment section below. In March's Underwater Watch, I'm going to be looking at how the fish are becoming more active and much hungrier. For the last two weeks or so, the water temps have been between 8 and 10 degrees, and although the fish would probably eat every day, I've been limiting feeding to a small amount once every other day. This is to prevent overloading the filters before they've had a chance to build up their biological capacity. The rudd in particular are much more active, 
almost at summer levels now, and are swimming higher in the water, constantly looking for food, both the bloodworm and pellets I offer them, and algae and other pond life. The tension carp are also more active, but are still to build their confidence in feeding off the surface again. As you can see from this clip, into dusk and then night time, they start to investigate higher up in the water looking for food. For a change, it's Judy, the largest tench, that is first to swim upwards towards the surface, followed by one of the smaller tench and then the carp. The mirror carp, Mira, neatly shows here why I probably need to vac around the marginal shelf a bit, which was helpful of her. I'm not quite sure what she was after, I checked the next day to see if it was frog eggs, but there were none, and it's not the usual place where uneaten food collects. It got too dark after this, but they did spend a fair while at the surface feeding. Once the filters are up to speed, and while keeping a close eye on water quality, I'm going to be making sure I provide them with plenty of food of different types to meet all of their different needs. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. 
In next week's episode, I'll be looking at some in-pond tinkering I'll be doing, so it'll be waders time again, and also some changes I'll be making to the pond edging and some general tidying up. Anyway, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>